How to manage your suppliers in Oracle Vision, Oracle Cloud? The objectives that we are planning to achieve includes the supplier model, data rule for supplier setup and maintenance, discussing the supplier types, supplier sites, how to create a supplier. Let me first give you an overview of the supplier. The process of creating suppliers in cloud application is basically owned by the procurement application. If an organization doesn't implement procurement, payable users need to be defined as procurement agents to create the suppliers. There are two ways in which the suppliers can be created. The first one is known as the supplier registration process. This is used by external companies and also by internal users on their behalf to submit their registration request to become a supplier of the buying organization. Regardless of how a supplier is introduced, the buying organization reviews the registration request using a collaborative review process and determines whether it wants to be considered this company as a new source of supply or not. The outcome of the review is either approved or rejected. If approved, the system automatically starts a process to create a supplier record from the registration request. The second option to create a supplier is with the help of procurement agent. If you are not going to the supplier registration process, supplier can be entered directly from the supplier work area by a procurement agent. There are some rules that you need to keep in mind for managing the suppliers. The first rule is supplier administrator and the second one is supplier manager. So what supplier administrator rules allows you to do? You can manage the suppliers, that means you can view and edit existing suppliers. You can register the suppliers, which means you can register an external company to be approved as a supplier. You can also manage supplier registration requests. So you can contribute to the registration process, you can import suppliers, and you can even merge the suppliers. But if you are not associated with the supplier administrator rule, rather, you are associated to the supplier manager rule. Then what all you can do? In that case, you can perform all the supplier administrator functions Plus, you can create a supplier directory from the front-end user pages. Keep in mind that before a user can create a supplier, even if they have the supplier manager rule, they must also be defined as a procurement agent. Another important point to keep in mind is that the suppliers are a part of the TCA, Trading Community community model. They are considered as global entities and are not created within a business unit or within any other organizational context. However, the supplier sites are assigned to business units and can be assigned to more than business unit also. The TCA allows the creation of one entity or party being used for multiple purposes in the cloud applications. For example, the party that you will define as a part of the TCA model or trading community model, it could be initialized as a supplier, as well as a customer also. So you don't have to recreate them when you want to deal with them as a customer. If you look at the event that is appearing on the cur current slide, for a ABC corporation entity can be created as a boss, a supplier and a customer. The customer shape to site address can be used as a purchasing site purpose and the customer build to site build to site can be used as a pay site purpose. The trading community model ensures that the integrity of your master tables.
this is the supplier model here for TCA registry ID supplier number then what is the data you have defined for the each supplier for the profile tab there are organization business classification products transaction tax income tax payments for the address tab there are sites transaction tax contacts payments the sites of the suppliers there are general information purchasing option receiving voicing payment qualifications and site assignments for the contacts there are contact information and the user account now let's go to into the system to show you how to create the suppliers in oracle cloud applications once you log in by your username and password you will go to procurement navigate to suppliers go to tasks create supplier here you will enter the supplier name for example new supplier then you have to choose a business relationship there are two type here prospective and spend authorization prospective option enables the supplier to participate in sourcing negotiations and supplier qualifications but doesn't enable the supplier to be available for ordering and invoicing whereas if you choose spend authorized it indicates that this supplier or the supplier is ready for ordering and invoicing supplier can be initially set up as a spend authorized supplier or if a supplier is a prospective supplier request can be initiated for a supplier to become spend authorized by using two options or other th three options the first one is the user request prospective suppliers to be promoted to spend authorized from the supplier record second is prospective supplier is awarded negotiation and the third is a supplier is automatically created from an approved registration request if the supplier has the initial intention of becoming a spend authorized supplier so for the time being i will choose it as spend authorization then you have to choose the organization or tax organization which is corporation foreign for an individual government i will choose a corporation what is the tax country for this supplier i will select united arab emirates what the tax registration number if you have for this supplier i will put one two three tax registration id and the dus number if you have integration with done and the Pride Street database you can also provide a DUNS number here then you can cl click on create some cases if there are any matching names you might get as a suggestion that there is a possibility that you are trying to create a duplicate record so you can ignore you can again change the name but this happens only for duplicate record as a supplier name now let's take a look at each of one of these tabs the profile you can review the supplier name that you have provided Arial. if you want to provide an alternative name also you can provide you can also associate a supplier type if you need very virtual rule because the based on supplier 
طيب you can select the invoices in a payment batch so if you choose a supplier type of let's say contractor at the time of running payment request you can choose the supplier type as a contractor and the system considers the invoices of this particular supplier during that payment process request if at any point in time you want to make this supplier inactive you can also put inactivate date to put as inactive you can also associate a parent supplier with this particular supplier if this supplier is a subsidiary of a parent organization then you can also provide information in the lower section of this page you can put withholding department name if you go to organization you can select or provide alias name you can decide whether this is going to be a one-time supplier or not you can provide details over here that which here that that supplier is registered or established what is the mission statement also in which year organization was incorporated you can provide chief executive title name principal title principal name also you can provide financial profiles such as financial year and the months what is total revenue what is preferred functional currency and if this particular supplier will get merged later on with another supplier record then the merge history can also be tracked over here then we were are going to take a look other details here such business classification the business classifications you can provide the business classification details to support the tracking of supplier certifications that are important to companies for different reasons such as for supplier diversity programs so in many countries you may have to provide the details to the authorities to the extent of the business that you have done for a specific set of vendors such as for example female owned and so on then you can also maintain the list of products and services in this particular tab on the transaction tab you will provide the details that determines whether to automatically calculate tax for these parties transactions or not you can decide about these options allow tax applicability whether you will allow offset tax calculation on this supplier record or not whether you would like to set invoice values as a tax inclusive also now all this information can be provided here or they can be created in oracle tax solution as well so whether you do it here or you do it there system will understand that these informations are supported to be tied to this particular party record then you can provide the information in income tax section this is determining whether federal income tax is to be calculated or not and there are many other options available respect to the withholding tax calculations at the withholding tax group then navigate to payment tab here you can provide the information that the default payment method you can provide the bank account details here also you can provide these details at this level or you can provide these details at the address level also then you can make provide the default payment method and provide the payment specifications separate remittance delivery also this is for first tab as a profile 
Now let's go to the second tab as address. I will provide, you can press on create. You have to provide first as address name. For example, new supplier. This should be a unique name because this is the name that will appear to an end user while they, they are going to record an invoice or they will process a payment for the supplier. So you have to carefully provide this name. Then you will provide the address details, the country. What is the address? I will book. address one address two emirates language and then you have to go to to put the address purpose of this organization or this supplier the available options are ordering remit to rfq or padding so if you think that this address is only going to be used for managing order purchase orders then you enable the first flag as an ordering. If you think that this particular address is also going to be used for sending the amount against the goods and services that this supplier has provided, or in other words, if you want to use this as a pay to site, then choose Remit 2. And if you want to consider this site only for request quotations or bidding, then choose the third options for RFQ or bidding. But now I will choose ordering. Then you have to select phone if you have fax, email, and inactivate date in case if you are going to inactivate this site, you have to put inactive date. So now let's go to sites. You have to provide the sites here for procurement, PO, and site. You can assign business units to a site from this tab. Or you can also do the same on-site tab as well. So here basically with whatever business unit you will attach, this is going to be the procurement business unit. Whereas the business units that you will attach on the site assignment tab, they are related a client business unit and the bill to business unit. So there is a difference between these three. Whatever business unit you will provide here that is traded for purchasing purposes, the client business unit is the one that receives the service and the bill to business unit is the one through which the payment are going to be managed. So let's create to a new one procurement business unit. We have only one for this organization or this business unit. So it's already has got defaulted here. You will select site new supplier. So you provide here the site name and here you can also decide whether you want to use this for sourcing only, purchasing or whether it is going to primary pay site for this site. So if there are multiple pay sites out of that, which one is going to be primary pay, that is identified based on this flag. Then one or on the transaction tax tab, let's go to the other tab. Here you are going to allow tax applicability if the tax is already or provide the transaction tax related details. Also these settings are the same as the settings that we available on the profile tab site level setting will override profile level setting 
so whatever you provide on site level here will override the profile level setting then you can go to provide the contact information for the this supplier here you can put name job title email administrative contract user account and the status for the contact details and the payment again whatever we already defined or or, or said on the profile here the same details and also site level settings will override the profile level settings now so you have to save sites are, are created for a procurement business unit a site can be assigned to more than one procurement business unit also Procurement business unit represents a specific purchasing or sourcing organization that is responsible for establishing and maintaining supplier relationships. The site therefore allows a specific procurement business unit to set terms, controls, and policies which govern how the procure to pay transactions are executed between its client business unit and the supplier. Many of these sites attributes are optional and they need to be set only when there is a need to deviate from a supplier profile level policy for example the supplier might require more restrictive receipt and invoice tolerance now let's take a look at the attributes that you can manage at the supplier side press on supplier side in general tab user can provide alternate site name customer number which internal number the supplier uses to identify the buying organization you can also put a tax reporting indicator for this general tab second tab is purchasing here the user can define purchasing terms for this site including communications for suppliers self-billing information freight consent inventory and hold a specific control so here you can see there are a lot of details that you can provide in this purchasing tab control freight self-billing also for example you can enable the pay on receipt functionality Pay on receipt functionality which is available here then you can set the invoice summary level for the invoice or pay on receipt functionality you can provide communication method you can enable search and control such in enable or enabling the hold for all new purchasing document also you can also use pay on use hold all new procurement documents a lot of options you can select it in purchasing tab let's now navigate to receiving tab which is here you have to provide information relating to receiving control such as over receipt tolerance hourly receipt tolerance what about the over receipt actions receipt routing is it direct delivery inspection or standard if you know the difference between matching option two or three or third what is the early receipt tolerance in days and what are the receipt date exceptions then you have to invoicing tabs what is the invoice currency invoice amount limit invoice match options consuming advice order or receipt for example the invoice amount limit if an invoice is entered within an amount greater than this limit the invoice is automatically placed on hold 
you can choose your invoice match option so against which document you would like to match your invoice that you can see it here for match option available options is two way three way and four way as we see it here two way and the three way and four way two way means what that you want to match your invoice quantity against the ordered quantity if you choose three way that means you want to match your invoice quantity against the received quantity four way that you means you want to match your invoice quantity against the accepted quantity then you can also provide the payment hold control hold all invoices yes or no hold and man and matched invoices yes or no all default from payables options hold unvalidated invoice this is up to you what is the payment term payment term basis payment due or payment date basis as discount or depends on the due date of the payment what is the about the discount is it always or not this is for the invoicing tab here you can go to site assignment here you have to assign this site which we already created as a new supplier to start the users see it during record invoices in account payables so you have to auto create assignments this create site assignment for all business units served by the procurement business unit or you can press create you can choose the business unit here we have only one ship to location build to location this is optional then qualifications which is assessment and the qualifications of these suppliers once you finished and this is very important steps here as sign or site assignments for these sites to which business units it will be allowed or it will be appear for the users the users must assign to this business unit to see these suppliers during record invoices then I will press or click save and close save and close your changes were saved if you go to try to create an invoice for the same business unit we will go to payables invoices go to tasks create invoices if you select the business unit supplier new supplier let's go to supplier tab to check is it authorized or not check is there any pending approval or rejected What is the supplier with inc incomplete setup? We have we found our supplier. So before we didn't see this supplier in our list of value of the suppliers. I came back here again to suppliers and check what is is there any pending approval or rejected and what is the rejected reasons for the, the suppliers to restrict it to appear. I went to rejected. 
come down, come down. There are a lot of incomplete set. Either no address, we have one JJ, no contacts, our supplier, no administrative contacts, nothing, no tax identifiers, nothing. So what is incomplete setup of our supplier is there is no contacts. I can click on our supplier, contacts, create, try to create new contact, contact, phone number, save and close. Your changes were saved, OK. Save and close. OK. Let's try to refresh to check if there any incomplete setup or incomplete data for our new supplier or not. Go to down, no address, still JJ, no contacts. Our supplier removed because we already completed the contacts. So after we create the contact, let us see if there any incomplete setup or not. Make a refresh. Go down. There are no administrative contacts. I think it's like checkbox. Click on the new supplier, then navigate to contacts tab press on the contact which we already created and press on administrative contact save and close ok again save and close ok try to refresh to check if there any incomplete data or not for our supplier go down only JJ our supplier or new supplier is new supplier there is no any complete setup for our new supplier we will now let's go to create invoice after we resolve all of the incomplete data setup if we get to payables invoice create invoice put the business unit Boot your supplier, you will find our new supplier is appeared. You can continue and the, our new sites or new supplier sites is already given here. You can continue to finish this invoice. I hope that you got understand of what is the, what is the supplier, supplier type, how to create suppliers, what is the required information to set up suppliers. Thanks for watching.